something big happened today in the tech world. Many of you may have missed it. I'm talking about Avnet, AVT, a company I like to think of as the largest supermarket of technology on Earth, as well as a critical technology solutions company. Avnet's both the top distributor of electronic components, including semiconductors, and one of the largest suppliers of information technology, hardware, software, and services. Needless to say, these have been some pretty difficult areas of late, with the market putting real pressure on nearly every aspect of tech. On top of that, Avnet only gets about 40% of its sales from the Americas. The vast majority come from overseas, which means it's one of the biggest victims of, yes, the super freaking strong dollar. Yet after what's been a pretty tough year in 2015, Avnet's just reported this morning, managed to deliver a pretty strong quarter. While the company's sales came in a tad light, they nevertheless increased by 0.9% versus the previous quarter, and Avnet earned a buck 16 per share. Wall Street was only looking for a buck 08. The electronics marketing business, where Avnet supplies components, was the real standout here and would have been up 7.2% on a constant currency basis. That's really good. You'd think this would be a very tricky time for Avnet, yet after this quarter, the stock roared $2.47, or 6% higher today. Does that mean we finally baked in all the negatives uh, relating to that strong dollar, maybe even the decline of the personal computer, something that could lead to a tech turnaround. Let's check in with Rick Hamada. He's the CEO of Adnet. Hear more about the quarter and where his company's headed. Mr. Hamada, welcome back to Mad Money. Thank you, Jim. A pleasure to be with you. Thank you, Rick. I've got to tell you, when I read yours, I, I was reading this in conjunction with some comments I was doing about the banking group in Europe, I just said Europe's gotten really good. I mean, I'm not saying that Europe's holding its own. I'm not saying that it's stopped going down. I, to me, tell me, I mean, Europe's good, right? Well, I'll tell you what, on our components business, Jim, the, the answer to that is yes, and it's been an extended period of time. They've had solid mid to upper single digit growth rates over there in constant currency for the last eight quarters. Now, what happened in FY15 for us is that in the latter part of FY15, we had our computer business join them as well. We've had excellent execution on both sides of the house, and that type of uh, performance was a big contributor to the numbers you've talked about for our overall performance in Q4. Well, I mean, how did you increase your operating margins by uh, greater than 50 basis points despite the currency headwinds? I, not many of the companies I deal with have been, been able to do that kind of improvement. Well, Jim, it starts. A lot of credit goes to the team for some excellent execution. And it's not just cost management. It's also managing the gross margin in, in addition to taking care of the decisions we need to make on where we have profitable engagements and where we don't. So good portfolio management overall with the dis disciplined expense management and disciplined working capital management all adds up to a good equation for us. You know, Rick, maybe you can help me with uh, something that is broader than cell phones, because that's not really wh what we talk about with you. Uh, Internet of Things, connected car, connected home, these are on fire. But the companies that are involved with them tend to also have some exposure to cell phones. Is the Internet of Things big enough to offset what some think is a slowdown in cell phones? Jim, I, I certainly do believe so. In fact, we kind of concentrate, you know our broad industrial customer base, so we think of it more as the industrial Internet of Things okay. and the fact that all of these devices and all of, all of these uh, gadgets in our lives are now going to be connected and ultimately produce data, which ultimately creates an opportunity for analytics as well. And by the way, you've got to secure the entire ecosystem because some of this data is obviously uh, proprietary and wants to be used for certain purposes. So I, I do believe uh, IoT, some people ask me, some, what inning are we in in this game? I still think it's very early innings here, and there's a lot of opportunity yet to be created out of this uh, force of change. Well, I mean, you've got a couple divisions now. You've got a new one coming. I'm trying to relate how much... Uh, I should say that Adnet is an Internet of Things company now because technology solutions, I don't know how much it, that plays in that world because you still have a lot of personal computer exposure. No, actually, not too much PC exposure. A little okay. bit of components for the PCs, Jim, and processors, HDDs, et cetera. But wait, here's the way to think about it. I think of the Internet of Things in three buckets. I think of devices, connectivity, and then the computing piece. And our electronic marketing business, the components business, has been in the Internet of Things for years. They're very focused on working with the engineers that are all developing these devices and adding the connectivity. That's been going on for quite a while. The new piece for Avnet will be now bridging over to the great partnerships we have with our resellers and integrators who are now building their, in, their analytics practices to be able to go all the way from device to analytics. And, oh, by the way, as I said, provide the security overall. That's really the new part of the opportunity for Avnet and will actually challenge Avnet now to bridge across our total wealth and spectrum of resources in new and different ways. All right, it's good. I'm glad you clarified me for the personal computer because there was some, uh, in the conference call, uh, I, it was mentioned, and I, I was actually going to ask whether it's troughing, but it doesn't matter that much to you. Now, uh, last thing, M&A, we've been waiting, we've been waiting. I mean, big M&A. Uh, any chance to see some targets out there? You're the last man standing in a lot of these cases. 
Well, we've got great cash flow to support our aspirations for profitable growth, Jim. And as I actually got the question on our call today, I reiterated, we remain open for business for acquisitions, but we're going to be very disciplined about our approach, just like we are with our dividend and our disciplined share buyback program. But we are very actively interested in deploying this capital to create future EBITDA and cash flow wherever we can. But we've got to see a path to the sustained returns that we expect and that we commit to our shareholders. All right. Thank you, Rick. And thank you for a good quarter from Avnet. That's Rick Amata, CEO of Avnet. Man Money's back after the break. Booyah! Jim Cramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.